Where's David? He said he was going to meet us here. Hello? Hello? I'm up here. Hey there. I've just been hanging around waiting for our next episode to begin. Hold on a second. I'll be right down. I bet you're wondering why I was repelling. It's important for firefighters to train during a 24-hour shift. We must maintain proficiency on a whole host of skills. Today, we're going to follow the firefighters along for a 24-hour shift. You're going to see a typical day at the Brunswick Fire Department. The bell tolls at St. John's Church, signifying the end and beginning of a shift, 7 a.m. Firefighters and officers perform a pass down, exchanging vital information about the apparatus they will operate. On a dry erase board, firefighters' positions are written out. They will hold this position for the month, rotating onto the next piece of apparatus in line. After four months at Central Station, the firefighter will rotate to Emerson Station for two months. Each truck has a driver, and each driver is assigned a responsibility at a fire. So if you see here on our lead engine, which will be first on scene at a fire, the hose lines will be pulled off that. Kenny Coslett will be driving that truck. Now today also, he's on the third rescue out of the station. So as we go down the list here, we have our officer in charge, the lead engine, the second engine, which is our hydrant truck at a fire. It'll show up on scene and it'll sit at the hydrant. Our tailboard, which is actually the name for the person that will go interior and fight the fire. And then today we're down one person, but we normally have a floater and that floater will move around into any empty position and also be the second person interior during a fire. Our first rescue, as you can see, these two individuals are also staffing the fire truck. So during a 24-hour shift, we work both the fire truck and the ambulance. And then you see here, these two, driving and in charge, are also on the rescue, the ambulance. Now, over at Emerson Station, we have a lieutenant, again, officer in charge, driver of the truck, and that's the tower truck, and then tailboard. Now those two will also be on a rescue as well. So the driver and the tailboard staff a rescue and a fire truck. In Brunswick Fire Department, every individual is both a firefighter and an EMT, either at the advanced level or the paramedic level. Firefighters then prepare their gear for the shift, ready to be donned at a moment's notice. During this time, Coffee is drank and life is caught up on before the two crews separate for the day, one leaving for home, the other only beginning their 24-hour shift. Firefighters perform a daily truck check on the apparatus to which they are assigned. Following a check sheet, each truck is thoroughly inspected, making sure all equipment is present and in functional condition. If anything is found missing or mechanically unsound, the deficiency will be rectified. On Saturdays, firefighters perform a weekly check on fire apparatus. The cab is tilted to check all fluid levels. The pump is run for 30 minutes, testing its capabilities to stand up to the rigors of a fire scene. Equipment is taken off, run, and cleaned, making sure it is all in operational condition. Any deficiencies found will either be fixed immediately or tagged at a service and sent for repair. Crews check the ambulance, making sure all equipment is fully stocked. A thorough assessment is made of all equipment, and all cabinets and drawers are inventoried. On Sundays, a weekly check is performed on the ambulance. This in-depth check involves a deep cleaning and more thorough inventory of all equipment.
I'm frequently asked questions about my job by the public, and I plan to answer all queries during this part of the show. I have a letter here from a citizen named Marty Gellhorn. She asks, why do you bring a fire truck when I call 911 for the ambulance? Good question, Marty. When people dial 911 for an ambulance, dispatch collects information that helps us decide what vehicles need to respond. From this preliminary information, if the illness or injury sounds severe, we may need extra personnel to treat appropriately. This is to ensure the patient's best possible outcome from their illness. Sending a fire truck gives us extra personnel. Since we are all trained as firefighters and EMTs, we work on both the fire trucks and ambulances. Remember, I'm here to serve the town of Brunswick. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send them. I'll try and answer them the best I can. For next time, that's Ask a Firefighter. In an emergency, seconds matter. When you dial 911, you need help immediately. It is important the numbers on your home are visible. If you can't see them from the road, how will first responders? A delay in help is the last thing you need during your emergency. At a minimum, numbers should be four inches tall and contrast with the color of your house. Make sure the numbers stand out. If your home is more than 50 feet from the road, put an address marker at the end of your driveway. Mark your mailbox as well. Use reflective numbers at least four inches tall and be sure to put them on both sides of the mailbox. When deciding where to place the numbers on your home, choose a spot that is visible from the street in both directions. Make sure no trees or vegetation block them. Next to the front door is best and within the radius of a light. Check with your local municipality to see if they have any ordinances to guide you in this task. Time is crucial during an emergency. Number your mailbox and house appropriately. Helping first responders helps you. After truck checks are completed, firefighters then begin cleaning stations. Once these are completed, they enjoy a 30 minute breakfast break before progressing onto other duties for the day. Normally, training will fill the rest of the hours in the morning, but the firefighters and EMTs number one responsibility is to respond on emergency calls. The Brunswick Fire Department responded to 4,300 calls in 2017. With four shifts of eight firefighters and allowed to drop down to seven per shift, this busy call volume doesn't always allow for scheduled training to occur. Seconds matter when a fire occurs. Fire can travel quickly through a home if unimpeded. That's why we drill to put our gear on in under 60 seconds. What are you doing? What? Hey, that's tight. Hey. Ah. What? What? What is? What is this? Ah. Hey. What? Did you know there are three different levels of EMT in the state of Maine? Hello. Hello. EMT is actually an umbrella term. It stands for Emergency Medical Technician. We all start out as an EMT basic. The next level is advanced EMT, like Ryan. And last but not least, paramedic. Did you know a paramedic can perform a cricothyrotomy in the field as well as chest decompressions? They can also intubate and place advanced airways. A paramedic can give 30 life-saving medications in the back of the ambulance without doctor's orders. They are highly trained medical professionals. The ambulance acts as their own personal emergency room on wheels. At Brunswick Fire Department, every employee is at a minimum an advanced EMT. There are 21 paramedics and 11 advanced EMTs. So when you see a firefighter, you are also looking at EMS personnel. It is important 
that we train to maintain proficiency in all our technical skills. At the Brunswick Fire Department, we all hold hazmat, confined space, and ice rescue certificates at the technician level. Some of us are high angle rescue technicians as well. Besides training for our technician licenses, we also train to maintain proficiency in firefighter skills, extrication, water rescue, pumping, and EMS continuing education hours. This is but a sample of all the duties and skills firefighters are expected to have. As you can see, we are here today training on Brunswick's newest addition to its fleet. Due to the generosity of Stephen and Tabitha King, Brunswick Fire Department was the recipient of a grant to purchase an updated rescue boat. Replacing an older Boston whaler, this new craft will serve the department's needs well. Brunswick has an expansive coastline of 66 miles along the Gulf of Maine, as well as 20 miles of river frontage. While there has been an increase of recreational boating and aquatic activities on both the river and the ocean, Brunswick Fire Department's boat is housed at Central Station. When dialing 911 for help, it will take a few minutes for the boat to make it to the river or the ocean from Central Station. In that time, remember any boater safety training you've required and remain calm, help is on the way. It is important when boating, you wear a life jacket no matter at what speed you're traveling. According to the Coast Guard, in 2015, 85% of drowning victims were not wearing a life jacket. That's a significant number. Combine a lack of flotation device with the frigid temperatures of main waters and you have a recipe for disaster. Woo! But that's cold! See, when wearing a life jacket, we all float down here. Save a life, wear a life jacket. Now that morning training is done, and a grocery run was completed, picking up ingredients for meals, the crew sits down for a lunch break. After lunch, firefighters will perform other duties. Some of these include conducting and overseeing fire drills at the schools and hospital, or fire safety in the schools as part of the fire education program. Of course, most important, running emergency calls when they come in. If nothing is scheduled, then firefighters will perform various duties around the station, such as maintaining hand tools. The Brunswick Fire Department responded to 4,300 calls in 2017. Crews staffed the station for 24-hour shifts, responding from Central and Emerson stations. Calls vary in nature. The most frequently seen are emergency medical calls, car accidents, carbon monoxide incidents, and fire calls. What apparatus responds all depends on the nature of the call and what is needed to mitigate the emergency. When crews are dispatched to a fire alarm, two fire engines, the tower truck, and an ambulance will respond, as long as no other calls are happening at that moment. The crew of seven or eight will staff those four trucks. Each piece of apparatus serves a purpose during a fire. Arriving on scene, the crew of the lead engine investigates the alarm and fights the fire if found to be a structure fire. The second engine waits at the fire hydrant. Once it is a confirmed structure fire, the hydrant will be dressed and ready to flow water. After the hose is connected to the lead engine, pumping the hose lines, they will fight the fire. The ambulance crew will park their truck and donning air packs join the interior attack crew fighting the fire. The tower truck is a great resource to have. Carrying many ground ladders, these can be used to access windows higher off the ground or the roof line as well. With the tower's reach and bucket at the end, crews can perform roof operations from the safety of the bucket or on the roof, tethered with a lifeline. Although the ladder is designed to reach tall buildings, its benefit is not limited to them alone. It makes fighting fires in residential homes safer and more efficient. Also, besides roof operations, the tower truck has a massive nozzle in the bucket that can dump 2,000 gallons of water into a large fire. Combining this with the reach of the ladder, this is an invaluable piece of equipment. We're back to our segment, Ask a Firefighter, where I answer all your burning questions you have about the fire department. 
All right, let's see what our curious citizens have to ask. Thank you. This letter comes from a Mr. Edward Rochester. And he asks, will the fire department rescue my cat Jane when she is stuck in a tree? The fire department has a policy in place for this exact circumstance. If the cat has not removed itself from the tree within 72 hours, the fire department will then consider its options on rescue. It has been our experience that the cat will descend the tree on its own. Putting cat food at the base of the tree will coax the feline out. Also, giving the cat some space will help. If the cat has not come down, we may send over a crew to get the cat out. This is last resort, as this usually ends up forcing the cat farther up the tree, afraid of the stranger reaching for it. For next time, that's Ask a Firefighter. Hi, I'm Commander Tom Garapu with the Brunswick Police Department. The Brunswick Police Department is pleased to offer our citizens a safe and secure location to conduct your internet sales transactions. In our main parking lot, you'll find two parking spaces specifically marked for this purpose. With the increase of sales through online yard sale sites, Craigslist, and Uncle Henry's, the Police Department wants everyone to feel safe while conducting these transactions. It is always encouraged that any exchange of this nature be done in a public area and not at your home. On the east side of the police station in the parking lot, you'll notice signs for this location. These parking spots are monitored by cameras, which our communications division watches all the time. So the next time you make a sale, finally ridding yourself of whatever it is you're selling, make sure it's at the Brunswick Police Department's secure sale location. An ounce of prevention goes a long way. Utilize the resources we provide the town and let us help protect you before you become a victim. Laundry an everyday task we take for granted as being safe. That is, if we follow simple rules to prevent clothes dryer fires. The most common cause of dryer fires is neglecting to clean them. This simple task can avert disaster. Make sure the vent pipe from your dryer is rigid or flexible metal. Have the vent pipe cleaned out, at a minimum once a year. If you notice it takes longer for clothes to dry, have the lint clean from the pipes. Always clean the lint trap before each use. Make sure when you leave your home or go to sleep, you shut your dryer off. And follow the manufacturer's recommendations on the operation of the appliance. Throughout the year, and especially the winter, be sure the outside vent is unobstructed and the outdoor flap is able to open. An ounce of prevention can prevent a clothes dryer fire. Follow these tips to avert disaster. Now that the day is winding down, firefighters begin to prepare for dinner. I think tonight is chilly. How cliche. Once dinner is over and the kitchen has been cleaned, firefighters will meet on the apparatus bay floor. Now comes the final task for the day, washing the trucks. During the winter, the trucks have to be washed inside the station. This task is somewhat difficult because of the tight quarters and because of the age of the station water will run down into the electrical room of the station. In temperatures above freezing, the trucks are washed outside. Once this task is done, firefighters will retire upstairs to the day room or the bunk room. The hope of sleep is there, but doesn't happen often. With a call volume of 11 to 15 calls per shift, this keeps the crews running constantly. While the firefighters have the chance to sleep, they work 48 hours per week two 24-hour shifts. The next morning, the crew is up bright and early, cleaning the rescue from the night before, making sure the station is in order for the oncoming shift. In the distance, the bells of St. John's rings, signifying the end of one shift and the beginning of another, and thus is the cycle of a 24-hour shift at the Brunswick Fire Department. Thanks for hanging out with us. We hope you enjoyed your time at the Brunswick Fire Department. Until next time, stay safe.